This is Anfa, and he will be presenting the talk From Fine to Fantastic Beyond Static Sound Design. Let's welcome him. Woo! Who's ready to rock? In this Sunday morning. It's not yet Sunday morning, but we can rock still. We can rock hard. All righty, so uh, this is talk From Fine to Fantastic Beyond Static Sound Design. And before I start, I want to ask you some questions. Quiz time. Question number one. Who's first time on Sonoy this year? You're lying. I see one, two, three, four, five people. Six? Okay, who is the first time on Sonoy at all? Like, this is what I'm asking. The question is, who wasn't here last year? Alrighty, I see one, two, three, four, five, six people out of who, how many we have. That's something good. Um, who is making music with open source software here? Oh, nice. One, two, three, four, That's like seventy uh, percent of you. Who is not making music with open source software then? One, two. Ah, yeah, the, you're, yeah. You're making music on Linux, but with Fruity Loops, right? Okay. Shame on you. I love you anyway. Never mind. Oh, nice. Okay. I, I don't. <laughs> He's not making music open source software. All right. Uh, who knows me? Do you know my face? Oh, nice. That's lots of people, like 60%. Uh, who doesn't know me then? Oh, this, this dude is lying all the time. <laughs> hey, you all know me? I shouldn't be then introducing myself. I guess someone doesn't know me. Okay, at least one person, good. Then I have the, <laughs> the excuse to follow on. <laughs> mm, do you, have you heard my music? Maybe you know what I'm doing? Like stuff on Bandcamp, some of them is YouTube, yeah? How many? Woo, that's like 30%, I guess. I'm trying to say it out loud so it's on the record, you know. Uh, have you saw my videos on YouTube about open source music stuff? Who saw that? Lots of people, like another 35%, I guess. Nice. Uh, maybe some of you are supporting me on Patreon, actually. No? I don't know. You know, there's 24 people worldwide, so it was a slim chance, but still. All right, so for those of you who don't know me, um, there's a quick introduction. Can we turn it up a bit? So probably have heard this piece of music last time. So I'm making videos about open source software for music production. I'm also on Patreon and there are some people supporting me so I can do it more. Here's some of that stuff and I want to show you some excerpts Let's from my see. recent work. Now explosions with all distortion is like... Uh, that's a totally <laughs> legit video. That's an explosion. That was a video That's about like Wolf Shaper. Things. It's a distortion plugin. Start the shit out of it! <laughs> Too little distortion. And that's a music video I made with Blender for the track that is playing there. <laughs> and that's a piece from my last year's album. It's on YouTube with this cool visualizer. Made it in Blender. I love this drop. This was done in LMMS, by the way. I also play some guitars. This is from a two hour, more than two hour video on YouTube. I plan to maybe make some more videos about guitars. Third and last, you need to install Ardor and Zenfusion. So I'm gonna add sudo and this will do it. I 219 megabytes, yep. <gasps> a different note. And that was last year's Sonoy. This sounds just like a cowboy. And that was last monthly livestream I made. <laughs> you know the air horn meme? <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> that was live. <laughs> Yay! 
I know quite a few have been here on this recording. And that's a track I made for the Wolf Shaper video. I also discovered my phone can record in slow motion and I had some fun with it. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, my, my wife didn't really love it, but I think it's really cool. I like this moment. Yeah, it's, and then it's just, just it fades out into a coffee mug. I think it's it's just uh, I love this part. Hey, what's what's going on? Tobias, what the hell are you doing? Uh, I'm introducing myself to the audience. Don't you see, honey? Yes, I'm watching the live stream, <laughs> but it's bullshit. Cut that off now. But that that was so funny. You don't enjoy the video? No, it's not <laughs> funny. Nobody gives a shit about your stupid coffee being flushed in the toilet. Get I do. to the point, make it worth their time. <sighs> oh, and, and send my love to Nils. What? Is, is there something I don't know? Uh, uh, well, that's, you, should, you, should, you should always never tell your root password to your wife. That's, that's the thing. So you already know my wife, Kasia. She's lovely. We, we made some music together with open source software. Um, I don't know why she's calling me right now. It's rude. All right, so um, today I want to inspire you to shift your music productions to a higher level and give you some knowledge and show you the tools that we have. Uh, I'll be using Ardor, because that's my weapon of choice. And uh, in the end, there'll be a Q&A session, like in every talk. But I guess uh, there will be a practical session also. And I think you can give suggestions during a practical session and just throw your questions at me then. Uh, because I, it's not totally planned, so we may shift directions. Uh, yeah, and I want to take a selfie from the stage in the end, if you don't mind, because that's really cool, I think. No? Yes? <laughs> All righty. So, more questions ahead. Uh, but first, I'm going to play two pieces of music, and I want you to try and spot the difference. So here comes the first one. Okay, so what do you think about this? Was it interesting? Not, not so much, right? Actually, it was the same loop repeated four times. Uh, boring, huh? That's lazy. That's criminal. Okay, um, now I'm going to play the second version of this. Listen closely. think of that? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I deem you think it's much more interesting, right? Um, more and needs more cowbell. Yeah, definitely. Well, I miss cowbell here too. However, like it's interesting, when I listen to these two pieces, I always feel like the first one is much longer. Do you feel the same? It's actually the same length. It's just that the second one has much more expression. Things are changing. You're not bored. You, the, things are doing things. So, I want to ask you, what do you think I did between the two things? So I have some suggestions. Do you think I added new instruments in the second part? And you are correct. There are no new instruments. Shit, I rehearsed this to say, ah, no, <laughs> you were wrong, but you were right. There are no instruments. Do you think there are, and I played with the notes? I changed the MIDI data? No. no. You're way too smart. 
what the heck? <laughs> what do you think about effects? Have I added new effects? Yes. Ha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. I didn't add any new effects. However, oh. uh, some effects were set up uh, in the first part in such a way that they didn't affect the sound. They were always there. They were, weren't on bypass. <laughs> I know it's kind of cheating. <laughs> yes? But in the same way, you could just add new notes by having the uh, velocity set to zero. So it's like oh, yeah. looking at it that way. Oh, I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't cheat in that way, okay. Yeah. If you cheat in that way, you can cheat in even more extreme way. Yeah, sorry. Um, all right, but the point was, uh, what do you think is the tool I used to make the difference? Yes? It's automation. You're right. It's automation. It's lots of automation, actually. So... Um, Another quiz time. <laughs> mm. Do you know what is automation? Who knows what is automation? Okay, see like 40% of hands in the air, right? Okay, so how many of you have used automation in a project? One, two, three, four, five, six, and oh, it's quite, quite still 35%? Okay. And, do you use automation in every single project? One, two, three? One, two, two hands? I do. And you fucking should be. Because automation is the key to survival in the post-nuclear society. When the bombs fall, when the fallout comes, you don't want to be coming to me and saying, oh, I'm for teaching automation now, it's too late. You had a fucking lifetime to learn this stuff, and you did nothing. And now you're all gonna die of radiation poisoning. And all your backups are gonna be destroyed too. Um, uh, excuse me. Um, can I you? Um, uh, sorry, I, I think this is from a wrong talk. Um, moving on. So, what is automation? Automation is a way to make the DAW turn the knobs and move the faders for us. It's a tool that makes the computer music more expressive, more humane. Computer music can get very boring and like, we can feel very detached from it, but with automation, we can make things change slightly or not so slightly during the course of our piece. So we don't have to just make our presets and leave it there. We can make them evolve over time. And that creates very interesting effects. So uh, this is what I'm going to be talking about. And also, it's not that hard, actually. I think like a lot of starting out people are afraid of automation. They think like it's, it's so complicated. It just, I don't know, I don't know what it is, what it does. It's not. It just, Let's just dive in and I'll show you that automation is not that hard. So now I'm going to do a practical demonstration. I'm going to show you how to use automation in Ardor 5.12. Uh, Ardor 6 is not out yet, so we're sticking with that. And there are some problems in Ardor 5.12, some difficulties, and hopefully I'm going to show you some ways I found to work around the limitations to get the music done how you like it. Yeah, let's just dive right in. Nope. For some reason, my keyboard is not working as it were working. Okay. You know what? I'm going to disable Wi-Fi because that can... There are hackers here. I want to be on the safe side. <laughs> so, I have a little piece that I made. Uh, it's a different piece, but uh, if we have time, I'm going to open up the session for the track uh, I were playing in two versions, and we can take a look there at what I did, what I used, and how it affected, how the automation affected the whole thing. So, I have some 
music here. Mm, I just made some simple things, not too much stuff, hopefully. And let's start with the basic basics. So, mm, every track in Ardor has this button here with the letter A for automation. And if you press it, it opens up a menu. Mm, we can access different automation parameters, like we can automate different parameters of the track. We can automate the fader, which is this guy. Uh, we can also automate the mute button. So we can basically make a track go off for a while. We can also automate the punning. It's in two parameters because we have the width and we have the panning. Of course, we can switch this to a stereo balance, and then we have just one track for panning. Okay, I'm going to close the two. Uh, let's just focus on this fader automation now. I'm going to switch this back to stereo and reset the padding. So by default, um, this is an automation lane. So it's like a track that is assigned to a track or a bus. And it holds automation data, so we can draw some points here. Now if I play it, nothing happens. Because uh, the automation tracks have four modes. Uh, the, the basic mode is the manual mode. It means it's going to ignore everything that you have on the lane and just go with this value that you put here. So it's the manual control, no automation in use. If we want to actually read the data from here, we can use the play mode. And now it should follow this automation. So you see the volume. The volume of the track is changing. And that's very useful because we can alter our mix uh, and this is also something that, that exists in the industry, like you have a static mix where you just find the perfect setting for your faders when everything plays as good as it can, and then you go to the dynamic mix. You use automation to alter the balance in some parts of your song to make it feel more musical. There are other modes. There is a write mode. When you play in a write mode, everything on the lane is going to be overwritten with what you have here. So we can record some motion. Let's me, let me play this and move the fader. So it records everything. However, as you can see, there's quite a lot of points and it will be quite difficult to edit. So this is something you can use, but maybe it's not optimal. I, I personally prefer to use the draw tool the, in the draw mode to just insert the points on my own and move them around it. This way it's easier for me to manage later. Mm. And there is the fourth mode, which is now automatically enabled. When you enable write mode, you play, and you stop the transport, Ardor will automatically go to the touch mode. And that is very wise, because if it wouldn't do that, uh, you would be again with the write mode and trying to listen to what you've done would overwrite your automation. Let me just show you. If I leave this in write and just want to listen, uh, just erased all my work. So that's no good. That's why it switches to touch mode. Touch mode is like a combination of the play and write modes. When you are in the touch mode, it will play back whatever is there. But we can also touch the control at any time and add new automation information to the session. So it won't remove anything unless we touch it. That's why the touch mode is pretty useful. Uh, if you don't want to mess up your automation, I suggest you just put it on the play mode because then you can't break it <laughs> if you accidentally move a control. Uh, it's the safest way. Okay, now more things. Uh, if we right-click on an automation lane, we have some options. Uh, we can change the state, of course, and we can clear 
all data. And that removes all the automation points we have and switches it back to manual mode. So if you decided uh, this automation isn't really needed for this, you can just right click, go clear, and then you can just hide this automation lane. Now, hiding the automation lane is not the same as clearing it. You can have some data here, just not make it too loud, and we need to make it play. So and you can just hide this automation lane. Let's play it again and watch this fader. It's still in effect. Actually, the automation mode play shows us that the fader is in different color and we can't touch it, we can't do anything. You see this fader here, we can do things, we can do, move it. And it's, uh, it has dark background. This one is a light background, it's locked because it only plays automation. So the play mode is, is it's good if you want to lock down the automation and not break it. And, and because yeah, you forgot there was automation. I tend to keep all my automation lanes open. Uh, but sometimes if you have too much and the session you're trying to crawl is too long, it's, it's going to get in the way. So, However, there are tools to help with that. When you go to the automation menu for a track, we have some options here on the top. It says show all automation. When I click this, we get all parameters for all plugins on this track. So this is a mess, right? I can scroll forever here. And we could actually, you know, do something and, and change something, and record something, but, well, um, it's not really a, a good way to discovering what is there, I think. But there are other options. There is hide all automation, so it just clears it for us. It doesn't remove any data. It only hides it from the, from the view. And there is also show existing automation. That is very useful because it only shows the automation lanes that actually contain some data. I find this uh, very useful. Mm, all right, so let's have some fun and see what we can do with this baseline to make it more interesting with automation. I'm not going to use the fader I'm going to clear this automation and hide the track. And now let's just loop it. I'm going to go to the grab mode of the G key. I will select all these regions. I'm going to select the, press the right square bracket to uh, put loop markers around the selection and then press the L key to loop it. It's a bit quiet. Uh, there's some sidechain compression with the kick. I'm going to disable it for now so we have a clearer view. Just click here. Now what I want to do is play around with this filter. Because it's not really fun when I move it. But when I leave it, it's just static. I don't want the static sound, I want it to move. So, I'm going to go to the automation, processor automation, and here there are all the plugins I have on this track. As you can see, in the same order that they are in this plugin um, table. I'm gonna go to the call filter and select frequency. It's this knob. So when I move it, you see this fader moves too. Let's see if I put it in the touch mode. That no, doesn't really work this way. That's not a problem. I really want to put it in the play mode. And now I'm going to make this larger. Press D key to go into the draw mode. Or click here. And now let's just add some points and listen. See what happens. Let's play it. Well, this is a little bit too deep. I'm going to move it up. When I click or just hover my mouse over a point, we can see the value in Hertz. Uh, so that's helpful to, to know what you're doing. There's one problem. The scale should be logarithmic. It's not. It's 
like it's quite troublesome because you have too much resolution in the base and too little resolution in the high. So it's a bit difficult, but you can get used to it. I hope Ardor 6 is going to uh, do something about it. So you might think we could do this with, auto, with an LFO, right? Like a low frequency oscillator, maybe just in the synthesizer. Oh, well, maybe, but we can't do something like, you know, this with an LFO. So, LFOs and envelopes can only take you so far because they are actually doing the same thing every time you hit a key. And that's boring. And automation allows you to include add variation that is dependent on the, just the position of the playhead in your song. So it is actually expression. For example, you know, many MIDI keyboards have something called expression wheel or expression, expression lever. Like if you would use this expression wheel for every single note exactly the same way, it's kind of pointless because expression is something you use to accentuate parts of the music to make them stand out. And I think automation is perfect for that. Okay, so our baseline is done. Let's see what, it, what else we have. Let's maybe re-enable this sidechain compressor and hear it with the drums I have here. Synthesized. That's a bit quiet. Now, without the automation, it's going to be pretty boring if I switch it to manual and just put, pick a value. Boring! We don't want that. Alrighty, let's move on. What else can we mess up with automation? Make it more interesting. Mm, let's see about the drums. Do you have any ideas, any maybe requests? What should I mess up? Oh yeah, sure. Let's go, hi-hat. I'm gonna loop. So let's automate the panning, right? I think it might be good to switch it to stereo balance. So we can do this. Right? Okay, so let's open an automation lane for pan, for hi-hat, and now we can make it zoom across the room. Yikes. Okay, if I do this, it's a full cycle. Let's change it to play and we'll give it a go. Works. There was a glitch, though. Uh, I think looping in Ardor isn't perfect. Oh, also I have. Oh no, sorry. I have a different thing here. There's a slight, um, slightly different pattern here to play on the drum transition. Um, however, I had also another idea for the hi hat. I have added here an A delay plugin, which is. Um, a stock Ardor plugin. It's pretty useful. Uh, and you can see if I play this. We can get some crazy combing effects. And I really like this. So I wanted to make this um, automated. I can actually try and go with right, right in here. This works because that's a generic uh, plugin interface created by Ardor. Uh, all the LADSPA plugins are exposed in this way because they don't have a custom user interface. Um, and now I can just play it and... Now it's changed to touch, so if we won't break it. Let's listen if it works. Yeah. Kind of crazy. I like it. All righty. What else can we mess up? I have some ideas, but maybe you have better ideas. Yes? Tempo? Tempo? Yes. Mm. <laughs> you have found a loophole. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. A tempo is a little bit different. 
uh, but sure, we can change the tempo during the song. Uh, there is, here's the tempo um, um, lane, I would say, and you can actually add a new tempo marker. You can change the tempo, say, make it dramatic, 100 BPM. And now it can be a ramp. So if I change this, you can click ramp to next, and now it's going to smoothly change the tempo. So now I, I haven't tried this. It might break everything. Let's try. <laughs> this is trippy. <laughs> it works. However, tempo is not handled. <laughs> tempo is not handled with automation. It's it's a different thing, but you can you can do that. Uh, however, I would like to return to the static tempo for now. So I'm going to right click here and remove this tempo marker so we're back to where we started. As you you might have noticed that the automation didn't um, stretch properly along with the tempo change. Uh, our automation uh, turned out to be too short. Um, so we would have to correct that manually. Uh, I don't know if Ardor 6 is going to do it better. Maybe I should stop talking about Ardor 6 because it's not there. <laughs> okay, I have an idea. Uh, this is something I really like to do. Let's go with the snare. Bit crush it. Oh, we can do this. Oh, we can bit crush the snare. Let's see. Crush. I like Calf Crusher. Let's see what we can do. That's yeah, pretty short. I expected it to be more um, spectacular. Oh yeah. Uh, somehow, somehow I lost all audio. Do you get sound from me? Mm. <laughs> it could be. Uh, I think it worked like that. Yeah, I think it, the plugin just broke the stream. See. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna save the session. Yay! Troubleshooting. Woohoo! No talk is good without proper breakage. Let's reload the session. Demonstration. <laughs> Practical demonstration. Ah, that won't help me now, unfortunately. Mm. May I ask how much time do I have left? Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure because we uh, began later. All right. We're not sure. Perfect. All righty. I have an idea for the snare, actually. I want to use M verb, which is a very nice sounding reverb unit. I want to play with this mix knob and automate it to enable the reverb just for some parts. So I'm going to go to process automation, M verb and go find mix. And now, it's gonna be fun. Let's go play. Uh, is it coming from the uh, distro ports? What about I, f I guess, yes, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Falk TX is maintaining that, I guess, so he knows. Yeah, so we can have some fun. Just enable the reverb for a short while and then disable it. Or even make it like reverse reverb tail. Just increase it here and then just cut it. Get it reverb, yeah. Interesting things, right? <laughs> the hi hat delay <laughs> was still going. Let's see. Uh, how does it sound together? 
with this bass. Oh yeah, it's kind of, kind of blurring out. I think I should make it louder. Oh yeah, now we can hear the shink. Uh, it's kind of delicate because there's lots of other sounds happening. We could do something with the lead, I guess. Oh. Does the table is slight chaining? I think we can do something with the OBX desynthesizer. Right now we've been only automating parameters of effects, but you can also automate parameters of synthesizers. And that is super fun too. We have an LFO. We can make it do these things. Let's see. OBXD. Hmm, many options. This is one thing that is difficult about automation. That it's not always obvious what you should pick. But let's see. LFO frequency. Yeah. Let's take that. What, what else do we got? LFO amount 1 and 2. Hmm, I think amount 1 is for to sending it to pitch. So let's do this. Uh, now, now let's play it. It's funny, we get kind of like a formant sound, like a, someone saying something. A little bit like frequency modulation. Because the LFO is so fast, it's actually in the audible range, so we get kind of a frequency modulation thing, actually. Let's draw some automation for this and see what we can do. Maybe let's uh, leave it s somewhat. S uh, I guess so, yeah. All plugins that expose parameters, all the parameters can be automated, unless they don't expose them. Uh, some plugins don't expose parameters, or not all parameters, I think. That was a frequency. You can also have some fun here. <laughs> kind of sounding detuned. I really like, like, I use automation a lot because we already know that. It's really fun. It also makes you, makes your sounds like do more than one thing. Maybe I'm gonna make it much less deep. So this is some expression. Things are changed. We have accentuated different parts. This is what I think automation is, is really cool for. Okay, what else do we got? Here's a here's a little super saw, super saw. What can we do with it? We could automate an EQ. That's a neat thing. I really like using notch filters. They're very nice. Let's change this band, which number it is. One, two, three, four, five, six to notch. Now we're gonna cut a hole. Can you hear this? I think notches are really cool. So we need to automate frequency of band 6. Okay, let's find it. A, process automation, EQ 10Q, filters 6, frequency. 
There you go. I'll just set it to play. And let's draw something. Let's see what it has, what it does. Okay, we could start somewhere lower. Oh yeah, this scale is messed up. Yeah, it's really not very pleasant. Ah oh, yeah, we have some sound. You see, we could just try to add some modulation effects that have their own LFOs, right? like phasers or choruses, and it's all fine and dandy, but you don't really get this amount of expression unless you drive them with automation. If you just put them on and let the LFOs go and go, your listener's brain is going to figure this out. Oh, just using an LFO, there's nothing special about it. But if you do it with automation, make the parameters change, it's starting to get interesting. Let's try to maybe do something totally weird here. Just go like this. I think it's not weird enough. Let's, let's try this. Uh, still not weird. Weirder. Uh. Okay, maybe we can change the cue so it's a little bit wider. So we can hear the effect more. Yay, I like it. I like it. Hey, okay. I think that's it. Do you have any ideas? Question. Questions and answers. Uh, yeah, do you have any questions? Right. Ah, there's a microphone. So it will be streamed and recorded. Hello. Yep. Um, if you try to automate, uh, for example, the, uh, the volume, um, is there a way to do it accumulative instead of just uh, take over the, the slider entirely? So can it be like overlaid on top of what you have on the fader? Exactly, because if you automate something, you want it to be slightly less slightly louder in some piece, pieces or lower in others, and then you want to increase the entire volume of the entire track. Is that possible? I would use uh, an amplifier plugin then, mm, because you, can, you have it in the stack, you can disable it, because this fader section is basically an amplifier that is just tied to the, to the interface in a very nice way. So we can just add a new plugin, and let's just go amplifier. Fire. And there is a plugin, a built-in plugin called A Amplifier. I just, I'll just add it, and we have a gain control here, and we can just automate that, and then it's independent from our main fader. So we can just have the static mix here and the dynamic part here. Let me, let me just do it. Let's automate the gain. So let's see. We want to. Yeah, let's make it zero. I can uh, right-click on a point and do edit, and then you can type a value. This is sometimes very useful. And what I also do, by the way, it's a little bit of a um, of a sidetrack, but I think it's important. You can go to the settings, edit preferences, and there is a, um, audio. Mm. Editor, yes. Preferences editor. Uh, you have ignore y-axis click position when adding new automation points. I actually, by default, have this enabled. It's very handy because when you have this on, if you click, the point is added on the line. So it can be very precise. You can then just move it. If I, when I had the disabled, when I click here, I have this point right here, and I have to move it in position if I want it here. So I think it's easier. Mm, then again, you know, we can just. Then it's easier also when you have, you know, like zero decibels here. I can click multiple times, 
and say I just wanted to make this last phrase louder. So I just added zero decibel points, and then I can make it louder. Switch it to play. Let's solo it. And here's our amplifier. Yeah, so it works. And I can still use this fader. And it's all like layering on top of each other, so it's relative. You can also have multiple amplifiers for different things, and you can disable them and listen if it's good, if it's better, then I emphasize this or not. Yeah. And I guess you could also use some um, VCAs maybe and automate the VCA or automate the track, but not the VCA, and maybe it will superimpose it on top of each other, but I haven't tested it, so I'm not sure. Any more questions? Can you pass the mic? So uh, let's assume I have like a controller in front of me with a mod wheel. Is there like an easy way that I could use the mod wheel for whatever specific parameter I have uh, selected? So I could first record cutoff and then record the fader automation without doing like uh, crazy complex uh, readjustments somewhere in the background. Can you, can you pass me a keyboard? Because I, I haven't took one this time because my backpack can stretch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is a way to assign uh, MIDI CC controls to, uh, to automation lanes. Oh yeah, thank you. Do we need uh, power or just over USB? Okay, there's a port. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Oh, now it's, I think it, okay, it yes. it's reversed. Yeah, someone pressed that button. Okay. okay. Let's see if, if it's detected automatically, I guess. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Hello. So sweet. So, uh, I can... Um, Let's clear the filter automation, maybe. And I can... Uh, uh. It was something like middle clicking with control. I think I uh, maybe I have to enable this first in option. So I go to Edit Preferences, and there is um, Control Surfaces. What is this? Um, ah, let's go with Generic MIDI. I will enable this. Show Protocol Settings, and now I just select the keyboard. I think it's will be this. I don't know. Well, let's let's try. Now I think if I control middle click, oh yes. If I have any touch uh, control surface enabled, when you control and middle click on anything, it will open this little box and you can operate a controller and it will assign it. Uh, however, there's something you need to my, keep in mind like this is now like it's in a safe mode, so uh, if it's not detecting movement close enough to what it already is set to, it will skip it. So I can move it too fast, it's going to ignore it. Uh, so I always go again to the settings, control surfaces, the protocol you use, the settings, and I make the smoothing uh, all the way up. Is it that? I haven't used that in a while, so please forgive me if that's... All right, yeah. Now... <laughs> Oh, you can do it. You can also record this way. So let's take a different part. But you know what? Let's copy the drums. Ah, interjection, another important thing. Uh, to copy automation data or move it around, 
unfortunately, you need to use ranges. Here is a range tool, or range mode. So you can select a range of time, and then holding control, you select your tracks, and you have to select your automation lanes too, separately. Uh, it's a bit tedious. Uh, sometimes they don't want to select, like now. So it's sometimes flaky. Uh, but most of the time it works. And now I can go Control c to copy this into memory. Now make sure your edit point, this is the edit point, is set to whatever you want it to. For example, I have it set to playhead. That means it's going to be pasted wherever my playhead is. So if I place my playhead here, I can have my mouse whatever, Control v and there it is. But I can also use my mouse. So now I can push my mouse here, press Control v uh, Snapping takes effect, so I have magnetic snapping to beats, that's why it's not, it's precisely on this beat, not, but because the snapping helps. So this is how I like rearrange pieces or duplicate parts with automation. It's a bit troublesome right now, but it works. Okay, so let's record some bass. Or maybe someone wants to record some bass. Maybe that's the last thing for now. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go to the grab mode, deselect the tracks. And let's find the bass track. Okay, we have record. Let's go to touch mode. And it here and I can just shift space. I know it sounds terrible, I didn't prepare for that, but you can do that. You can record your performance with MIDI and automation data uh, so if you are a hands-on on, on the controller type of guy, uh, Ardor can do it for you. Uh, all right, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.